Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, things that don't exist in tennis anymore since I started playing the game. That's over 30 years ago. Stay tuned. All right, so before I get started, shout out to our sponsor for this video, Go Sports. Guys, the bags are back in stock. For those of you who want these bags, they are now back in stock. Uh, they got this bag, which is what I carry, the Axiom. I call it the Axiom Pro bag, which is for me. And then they have that Axiom backpack too, which I've sold a ton of and I'm sold out of myself. So great bags that are perfectly thought out. Uh, check out gosports.com. That's G-E-A-U sport.com. Link will be on the bottom. Okay. Now, things that are no longer around since I started. So I've been playing tennis for 40 years now. Um, things like like pro shops, there's less of those, and I'll do another video on that one. But I got out of the shower last night and I thought about this video, and I was like, what don't exist anymore? Well, there aren't as many pro shops anymore. But do you, do you guys remember, if you're of that age, do you remember there were punch cards that when you get to like five punches on stringing, like if you strung with that store for five times in a row or you brought five rackets there, on like the fifth time, you got like a free grip, right? And then on the 10th time, the 10th time, uh, my allergies are killing me, sorry. Uh, you got a free string job. Uh, do you guys remember that? Raise your hand if you do. Well, I do. And I don't think I've seen that in over 20 years uh, since all the stores have been closing down. Uh, the competition isn't quite there to get the business anymore. So that is a thing of the past. I mean, people still come in and say, hey, do you have a punch card? And I'm like, dang, I know how old you are. So, you know, I was like, gosh, shower, and I'm like, damn, they don't, those things don't exist anymore. So that was like, Whoa, bing, video, right? So what else doesn't exist anymore? Well, the other thing was smaller rackets. So when I first started, obviously, it was wood, T2000s, um, pro staffs in that 85 square inch head that I think Chris Everett used first when I first saw her do it, and then Pete, um, and then Roger, right? But that racket got into three uh, progressions with almost not three generations, but I mean, within like that 15, 20 year span of living until Roger left that 85, did it kind of get extinct? So 85 square inch, 90 square inch when he switched over, um, gone too. So smaller heads are gone. Now in the subject of smaller head, older rackets, well, heavier rackets are also kind of extinct. I mean, the heaviest racket we have today on the market in the stores is this Roger Federer um, Edition Pro Staff. It's 12 ounces before strings, heaviest racket out. I feel like when I first started and the rackets were out that were after the wood and the steels, were in that 11 ounce, 12 ounce range. So this was kind of the norm back then. Uh, this is kind of an anomaly now, as rackets have definitely gotten lighter. They're in that 10 to 10, 5, 10, 6, 10, 8 range now. Uh, so rackets have definitely gotten lighter. So heavy rackets, extinct, right? Now, all this all these changes have obviously made the game easier to play, right? But what about other things? I mean, I feel like when I first started playing tennis that my foot would hurt wearing those Stan Smiths 
wearing those rod lavers. Like I would put holes in those shoes. My pinky toe would basically suffer and get bruised up for the first two, three weeks until I stretched them out with my fat feet uh, because, you know, the stands were, were leather, right? They weren't, I mean, I guess they were as well thought out as they could be back in the day. I mean, nobody cared about foot shape or, um, you know, points of contact, whatever you call it, pressure points. That's what it is. Pressure points in your racket, in your racket, in your shoes, right? But, but now with people thinking about shoes, um, comfort, durability, and stability, shoes have definitely come a long, long way, right? You got, I mean, you got like a Novak shoe. This is the women's Novak shoe, right? You got the sock-like design, which is great. Keeps you in the shoe. It's definitely wide enough. That kind of contours to your feet. Got that nice durable sole, right? It's well thought out. Like somebody used their brain to think about a shoe and maybe used a foot doctor perhaps or a bunch of computers to engineer a shoe like this. No more binding your feet or tying a brick to your foot and having basically zero technology and barely any support for your feet. So we've come a long way in tennis shoes for sure. So I thank the tennis gods for figuring out how to make good tennis shoes. Now, back in those days, now this isn't quite extinct though, but it's getting there. So we all know Prince Synthetic Gut, at least in pro shops like this, I don't sell too many of them. I don't know about stores everywhere else, but at least the stores that I know that are around where I am, uh, synthetic guts in its plainest form, like this Dyna wire. Basically, I don't sell too many anymore. People are more educated and they want better things. Um, you know, the, I want to say the industry floor is now like a Gamma TNT or Head Velocity. You know, you want the better multi-filament synthetics now instead of just the basic white bread as i call them and if you're going to get the synthetic gut you might as well get the best one i call this is the dyna wire get the best one uh, made in japan all right while i'm on the subject of strings um tight tension is also extinct um i really don't string rackets over 60 pounds much anymore um i mean i may get one a month if that um i know have some crazy guy that wants me to string his rackets at like 80 and 90 pounds and i tell him hey, i was like hey man uh if i put this on the stringer and i start stringing and the string breaks you're still paying me for this because you wanted it so and he agrees and i was i wind up getting it done but i feel sorry for that frame and his arm but it's tight string tension no longer requested so average string tension nowadays is anywhere between 48 to 55 that is the bulk percentage of what i'm doing in terms of average tension so tight tension go back to the 80s and 90s because it doesn't exist anymore all right so one Last thing that I wanted to include is I was watching um, 90s tennis videos on Tennis Channel. Um, I believe it was Steffi Graf and Monica Sellis uh, in, I believe, a Wimbledon final. It was amazing to me how fast they played. I mean, none of that pacing around, you know, bouncing the ball, thinking about it, straightening up your strings for a minute or so and then heading back up to the line uh, or toweling off and heading back up to the service line and serving. You know, they basically 
you know, as soon as the point was over, they got the ball, stepped up to the line, served, right? And then they both did that. So the speed of play was pretty much rapid fire, right? I was like, Jesus, I totally forgot about how fast they played. So the speed of how fast you played in the rest periods are extinct now. Everybody is playing a lot slower now. So I remember I, when I was watching that match, I was like, it was two sets um, in the finals on the grass at Wimbledon, and they were playing really, really fast. Uh, I believe Celis won that one. I, I, I didn't really pay that much attention, but it was like an hour and 15 minutes, and it was like 6'4", six, 6'2". Um, from what I remember, but hour 15 minutes, man, an hour and 15 minutes, you barely get through a set sometimes, um, in women's tennis. Um, it, it, it's just not done anymore. I mean, can you imagine like not resting, not pacing around, going right back up to the line and going for it? What's changed? Is it the technology or is it coaching or is it personal mentality to kind of rest as much as you can in between points? Because those those two ladies, Graf and Celis, didn't really look gassed. So maybe the points ended a little faster? It didn't look like it, though. There were long rallies. Um, but what's going on? Is it like as much recovery as you can get in between points? or Or is it really that much more physical? Um, maybe you guys can help me with that, but fast paced tennis, um, is no longer around anymore. Now that's for sure. All right. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.